Oh, hey everyone, and welcome to this week's League Manager's Note. This is going to be the week six recap. Um, you'll notice today that I am not joined by Joel Gibson. He is ill, so I hope that he recovers quickly. He'd rather you not see him throwing up all over the video, so we'll respect his wishes, and I'm going solo tonight. I'd like to start this recap by apologizing to Eric. Last week we had shot the video uh, before all the games were completed. Um, we were pretty confident he wouldn't get the stats that he needed, but turns out he did get the stats that he needed um, and ended up winning that game. So we do apologize to Eric. I do sincerely. I don't like making those kinds of mistakes. Um, and I'm doing better to try to wait until the end of games are played before I actually shoot these videos. Um, that being said, I'd like to get right into the action. Bear with me since I'm by myself today. Um, normally, there's a little bit more in-depth uh, play back and forth from Joel and I. It's just going to be me today. So, like I said, uh, do bear with me. The first matchup, as always, is the champs matchup. That's me. Uh, 5-0 and at Doug. Doug was 4-1 and entering this matchup. He was the home team, um, and I won. I'm very excited about how this turned out. Um, I did say in the messenger though, uh, I understand that Doug was very injured this week. Um, I did have a couple players miss, but not nearly as many uh, high named players as Doug did. And I got a couple good ads off the wire and everything kind of had to go my way and it did. Um, I was really worried when Greek didn't get either of his triple-double opportunities. Uh, it looks like he tweaked his knee a little bit, so I'm kind of monitoring that as well. Um, shout out to Doug. He still put it up. I do want to note one thing. Last week when we were on the note, I said that I was going to complete or compete in blocks against Joel. And, or To Joel, I had mentioned that, and I was laughed out of the building. Um, I won blocks this week, for the record, by one. Uh, Doug's team kind of let him down a little bit today, but like I said, with all those injuries, there wasn't a lot he could do. Um, thank you, Jimmy Butler. Moving right along, oh, I moved to 6-0. and Doug will be 4-2. and Moving along, we'll go to Neiman at Joel. Um, I imagine that a reason why Joel is nauseous and throwing up is he was reviewing his box scores for this week. Uh, Marcus Smart is out for a while too, so du or Joel is struggling, and that certainly didn't help him this week. Neiman took care of business. I mean, Joker has been incredible. He has Sexton back. Uh, Neiman is a real horse in this race, uh, and I said it from week one, um, and I'm standing beside that. Neiman moves to five and one, and Joel moves to three and three, 500. Uh, next matchup, uh, upset, Cody with no wins gets his first win. Shout out to Cody. I shot, uh, I got you on the messenger as well. Nobody wants to go Owen, so uh, it's always nice to get that first win. Steven, on the other hand, I'm worried about him a little bit. Um, some of his players aren't coming around. Uh, some of them were questionable reaches, but... Michael Porter Jr.'s back. Um, Harden's playing well. Uh, he might not be out of it, but I thought that this week was definitely a must win for Steven, and he didn't do that. So, uh, like I said, shout out to Cody. Next matchup is Kyle at Matt. Matt ends up pulling this one off. Uh, it was a nail biter for sure all week. Um, Matt claims that he needs to get healthy and he'll be competitive, so I'll throw that in there. Kyle. If it's not one thing or the other, it if it's not one thing, it's the other with Kyle. I feel like every year he either has injury problems, he has COVID problems. There's all these things that we hear every year about why Kyle is uh, not competing. Um, but some of them definitely do have merit. Losing Clay, you know, getting random sits from KD, that's not going to help, especially down the stretch. He has Westbrook, who's sitting back to backs. Um, going to be tough sledding, especially in a two week format for Kyle, but, uh, there are some things that he can get done to, uh, improve his chances. I'll say, um, Kyle moves to two and four, Matt moves to three and three, 500, um, Steven moved to one and five and Cody moved to one and five as well. 
Uh, next matchup is Eric at Simmons. Uh, Simmons took care of business here. It looked a little closer than it was, especially this week. Eric always plays Simmons really well. I don't know if Simmons has picked up on that. Um, but for some reason, every, every time these two play, Eric gets very close to beating Simmons. Um, so that's just something I look for in these matchups. Simmons moves to four and two. Um, still waiting on Nurkic. Uh, we don't know what's going on with Levert. He's got some injuries as well. Eric is setting his lineup, so that's a good start. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, he he could definitely sneak into the playoffs at the end. He has really solid. Like Capella's been incredible for him. Um, and is really carrying him. He almost had 300 rebounds this week, I believe. Um, and that's that's definitely playoff caliber uh, rebounding for Merrick. Last matchup is CJ at Adam. Adam wins this one. Um, CJ just has some holes. It's just not going how CJ saw it going. I mean, I, I know he was hopeful at the beginning, but I think that... Uh, I think that next year may be a better focus for him. Um, I'm not sure, and I definitely don't run his team, and he's not completely eliminated by any means, but uh, he's going to have to find a way to fill that bottom if he has any interest this year. Otherwise, um, I might look for picks for next year. I know that he has uh, Davis, and you know, you can build around that for sure. That being said, Adam moves to 4-2, and two. And CJ to one and five. Uh, getting into my power rankings, I did these pretty quickly, and I'm sure Doug will have a problem with them, so we'll just get right into it, and I'll take my lashings afterwards. Number one is Mr. Modest, 6-0. and oh. um, We're doing it out here. We're giving it our best shot. We've won 58 straight weeks, so that's going to be my number one until somebody can beat me. Neiman at five and one is also going to be number two. Um, his only loss is to me. He's beaten everyone else that's been put in front of him. Uh, Doug moves down to number three. I believe I have had him at number two last week. Move him down. He still has the tiebreaker with Simmons um, working for him. And... Adam is next. Adam's been right around the top five all season. Uh, ball's back. He's healthy. He's shooting a ton of threes. Um, his name makes a lot of sense this year. I'm actually uh, impressed with what he's able to put up, and we'll see uh, next week. After that, you've got Simmons, who's the number five spot. Joel at number six. I have him. Well, Simmons is four and two, so that ends the four and twos. Joel is the top of the three and threes, him and Matt. Um, Joel has the tiebreaker with Matt, and Matt is at number seven. Kyle, I still have at the number eight spot for playoffs. So he is still right there. Um, Eric is number nine. I have him at number nine. Like I said, he can definitely squeak in there. Him and Kyle might be battling for that last spot. Um, next is Cody. Cody just beat Steven. Um who I have at 11. Um, Steven, uh, nothing much to say about Cody. He's still not an easy out by any means, but I don't think that he has any interest uh, in the playoffs. If he gets there, he gets there. Um, I know he's focused on bringing in that third keeper for next year. Um, Steven at 11. This one was tough for me. Um, he does have the tiebreaker with CJ, and CJ is number 12. Um, both of them are one and five along with Cody. So the three of them kind of have a little interlock down there at, uh, 10 through 12. Um, I'm not saying they're out, but, uh, these are just some of the teams that may be looking towards next year and focusing on that dynasty pick. Before we get into next week's matchup, I do want to say, uh, that the rule moving forward is going to be if you accidentally drop a player, you must notify the commissioner immediately. Um, if that happens, you will be able to re-add him. I'm going to need some sort of uh, confirmation that you were going to drop a certain player or what your plan was. Um, but you will be able to add him back 
for a 10% increase. So if it was Harden at $50 and you accidentally dropped him, he would be re-added at $55. Um, Joel dropped Aiton by accident. I was blown away in the morning. Uh, he texted me and asked what we could do. So I took it to the league. Um, and I, I like the penalty. There's got to be some sort of penalty for the mix-up. It's very sloppy. Um, but that being said, I think we worked it out, and I think we worked it out efficiently. Everybody got their plays. Nothing was lost, um, and there was punishment. So I think that kind of worked out. The next thing I want to talk about is next week's matchup, and then I have one more announcement here at the end. Next week's matchups, the first one I have is Adam at Modest. Um, we start with the champs matchup. I'm the home team. <sighs> I was looking over my scheduling this week, and Blake Griffin has two back-to-back, so he's likely going to sit two games off the top. Um, I've been doing relatively well at cycling. I know Adam cycles as well, so it could be an interesting week. Um that being said, I was looking at my scores next to Adams, and they are all very, very close for this week. So if we put up similar weeks next week, it'll literally come down to a hair. It could be a couple shots, like, for example, today I did with Doug. Um, I'm going to pick against myself. Uh, this will be the third week in a row that I've picked against myself. It seems to be working for me. Um, I'm going in hesitant. I'm going for week 59. I thought about this the other day. This will be week 59, and guess who I play for week 60? That's right, Simmons is who I play for week 60. Um, the last person to beat me, at least right now. So if I can somehow close out Adam, uh, I might be able to silence a demon for week 60. We'll see. Uh, Simmons and I always have really close matchups and somehow he always, uh, manages to squeak them out. He has a pretty good record against me. I don't know if it's a winning record, but he's won enough that I'm like, Gur Simmons, you know? Um, yeah, so good luck to Adam. Uh, it would be a big win for you, obviously, in this situation. Um, I do have a one game lead on the, uh, one seed, so I'm going to do my best to try to keep it up there, but scheduling could work out for Adam this week. Uh, next matchup is Doug at Kyle. Um, Doug is healthy and Kyle, I'm not so sure. So I'm going to go with Doug. I think Doug kind of had an off week. He didn't have a majority of his good players. Um, his blockers kind of let him down there towards the end. Uh, but I'm still going to pick Doug away. Uh, moving along, we've got Matt. He is... Adam will be 4-2. and two. I'll be 6-0 and oh entering the matchup. Doug will be 4-2. and two. Kyle will be 2-4 and four entering their matchup. Next is Matt, 3-3. Three and three, At Neiman, 5-1. Um, Neiman is an unstoppable force, and I think that he's going to win this one. Um, maybe if Matt pulls the triple, uh, he has a chance here, but Neiman has a joker, so he could just as easily put the triple up. Um, so I'm sticking with Neiman there. Uh, Joel at Steven. This one's an interesting one because Joel's lost, uh, Mar Marcus Smart, which will go back onto his freshly cleaned off IR. Um, he will be able to cycle. Steven being the home team, his triple-double kind of gets a little bit weaker in this situation. He still has to put up those five categories to win, even with the triple-double. Um, this one's a really tough matchup. I think I am going to go, go Joel because I like his depth a little bit more. He's got white back. Um... And I just trust Joel's uh, ability to cycle more than Steven. Next matchup is Simmons at CJ. I don't think Simmons is going to have an issue with CJ. That would be quite the upset if it happens. Um, but I think Simmons wins this one pretty straight up. Next one is going to be Cody at Eric. Um, both of these teams have been putting up decent numbers. So I don't know what's going to happen with this one if they're going to cycle It'll be a very interesting matchup. This is one of those wins that if you're going to make it in the playoffs, you need this win. So we need to find out if Cody is really just looking to next season and Eric cycles him out. 
Um, it'll be really interesting. But whoever loses this matchup, sledding to the playoffs is going to be extremely difficult, especially being in the divisions like Eric in the West Division. He's going to have to play me, Neiman, two more times, or I mean one more time each. And then Cody will have to play Adam, Doug, Simmons, and Joel again. And so uh, that looks a little bit more bleak. So I think this win's a little bit bigger for Eric. Um, that being said, that's this week coming up. Good luck to everyone. The last thing I want to note here is the trade deadline is going to be February 28th. That's a Sunday. Um, it's the last day in February. I thought that that was the most appropriate. So I'm going to make sure that ESPN reflects that, but it is in fact, Sunday, the 28th of February. If anybody has any questions, feel free to let me know. Um, Outside of that, feels good to be 6-0. and Feels good to be the one seed. Um, didn't expect to be here. We're just enjoying the ride. I hope everybody has a good week. Joel, get better. Hope you'll be back next week. Um, if anybody has any questions, feel free to let me know. Uh, outside of that, we'll talk to you guys later.